Hey, Mr. Gilman from Browning, you got a copy? I do, Adam. Excellent, excellent. Well, hey, it uh, looks like it's a minute past five, and hopefully everybody's got their Zoom set up. I see a bunch of people have joined the call, and uh, welcome, everybody. So we, we uh, would be walking into the gun fair if it was last weekend, and we missed Gil there. Um, I was there. It was very lonely, apparently, uh, <laughs> by myself. But it, those of you who are thinking Browning and thinking gun fair, um, one of the things that goes without saying is you're talking rifles. And last couple of years, we've been able to roll out at the, at the uh, Reed's Gun Fair a full range where you can shoot up to 200 yards with Chris Gilman and the Browning folks, uh, usually paired up with Vortex, of course. But being we couldn't have it this year, this is as close as we can abuse technology to actually have some fun in the process. And uh, I think have some of, those con some of those conversations we would have had if we were standing in the Browning booth. And so... In that Browning booth, uh, Chris Gilman, who you see up in the right-hand side there, um, he will be jumping in here a little bit wearing his Browning colors. Um, I, alongside myself, I've got Todd Klein here, and he has a talk rifles. And uh, I think rifles, they maybe some pistols too, right, Todd? It's a handgun. Okay. All right. So one of the things that we're doing is to make this all happen, uh, dealing with the COVID-19 episode and everything else, is we are going through and going to extend any of the deals that would happen to gun fair until what, April 30th? Yes. We're doing? Okay. Okay. End of the month. And so what we'll do is, as we're going through this, is we welcome ready to chat. So this is kind of housekeeping items, but you'll see in the bottom of your screen there, you can chat. And when you're chatting, uh, we'll be able to grab those questions and then go through and answer them as they're coming along or as we have something that comes up. So uh, we encourage everybody to jump in if you got questions. Everybody, you'll find yourself on mute. And so once we get to the end, we'll do a little Q&A if anybody wants to ask some open questions verbally or more welcome to. But otherwise, Todd and Gilman are going to kind of walk through this and, and hit the key pieces of what we would have covered in the booth. You know, sometimes you got stacks of guns. I know pistols were hot last year, so we'll get to those. Um, but as, as they're kind of having the conversation, um, I think it's good to be able to just say, hey, first, uh, with rifles the way they are, uh, Chris out there in the Browning production cycle, are you seeing a good flow out there and uh, interruptions with the supply chain going on? Give us a little background on what's going on with rifles a little bit before we get going to the next. You know, actually, Adam, uh, gun sales are really, really good right now, obviously. So, you know, we're, we're kind of lucky to be in the, the industry we're, we're in. Um, yeah, production will be slowed a little bit. Uh, we're like in the, the European area, like Viana, who does some of our semi-automatic shotguns. Uh, a lot of the wood comes from Portugal. Uh, so we will see uh, some of the guns being affected. Um, but right now, you know, you've got a, you know, we, we were pretty fortunate that we really prepared for, for gun fair and, and got the lion's share of a lot of guns. Uh, one of the first things I'm going to be talking about is AB3s, and you guys have even a special make just for reeds with grade two wood, a, a little higher grade wood than the rest of the country. So, um, you know, there there will be some delays. Uh, BRs in general, we haven't been quite able to keep up with demand even last year or the year before. So those are always kind of, you know, hit and miss uh, come fall. Uh, Expos have been selling like crazy. So, um, you know, we have more orders and we can build even on the exports. Uh, you know, we've got a pile in stock and we're, we're shipping a ton, but um, you know, it isn't something that you can go on to Browning and, and look at their inventory and there's a whole bunch ready to ship out from Browning. Our customers have them, our distributors have them, but, but uh, it's not really, um, you know, they've got this 12 month production schedule and they can only kick out X amount a month. And if the demand is higher than, than what uh, we can produce it, that's just the way it is, you know. Uh, that, but, but it's overall, you guys have a ton of guns, and, and uh, we're, we're very prepared to handle all your customers. Well, like you said, Gilman, we, we were teed up for the gun fair, and fortunately did have a ton of good shipments coming in advance. And I think one of the key things that we were getting asked with that grade two wood is when you start comparing that new version of the AB3 to x -Bolts, how does it kind of sort out? So, Todd, jump in there. What are you running into? Well, that's, that's yeah. what we're going to start this tonight is with the comparison of the A-Bolt 3 or the AB3 and the X bolt, because this, you know, it's a question that we're asked all the time is the differences. So Chris is going to run this through those tonight. So we all are on the loop of what the differences are in the two rifles, Chris. Yeah, you know, and I, I appreciate that question. And, and uh, I'm going to start with the AB3 and then we'll go on to the X bolt. Uh, you know, we, we sold piles and piles of AB3s. You know, the, the A bolt is a, a tremendous design and 
when I sat in on the sales meeting a few years ago and they changed, you know, they, they're bringing out the expo. I'm like, well, what could they possibly do better? And we'll get into that. But, but let's talk about the AB3 first. And, you know, starting right from the recoil pad, it's actually a hollow on the inside. It's called the influx recoil pad. And it's got like angled um, pieces of rubber there. So when it recoils, it wants to go straight back instead of pop up and hit you in the face and give you a scope eye. So, you know, great recoil pad. We've got the palm swell. One of the neat things about browning uh, right off the bat is it's got big short throw. So it's a 60 degree bolt. So you aren't hitting your hand on the scope, a little faster to run the shell out and in. So we got a 60 degree throw. That's really cool. The other thing you can see this is on safety. We've got a little lever here where we can unload the firearm while it's on safety. That's something not all of the competitors do. Uh, one of the things with accuracy, of course, the AB3 does have a center feed I'm sorry, it does have a clip. It's a rotary clip, but it's clip fed, which is, you know, preferable versus a hinge plate uh, on a lot of rifles. Uh, a lot of people like the clip fed. Um, we free fill up the barrels. And what's important about that basically is um, if your barrel heats up and it touches a stock, you'll start getting a flyer effect where you might hit a couple towards the center and then you start getting a ladder effect. And anytime that happens, you know, the, you know, the shooter tends to adjust their scope back to the center, well then the barrel cools off and you're actually off. So having a free floated barrel is very important for accuracy. Uh, also have a recessed target crown. If you, if you ding the end of the barrel, which is more common than you think, you aren't gonna mess up your threads. It, it ensures accuracy. So if you take like the standard AB3, a tremendous value, a browning rifle that shoots you know, unbelievable at groups, it's got a lot, a lot of features. So, um, you know, depending on your budget, if depending on what you have to set, spend, this is an amazing choice for all big game and all target shooters and everything else. As you go into the X-Bolt, okay, what did they do better? All right. Um, and it, it's minute differences, but, uh, you know, still have the same great recoil pad. You know, you do have the 60 degree bolt, you can unload it while it's on safety. They changed the clip to a center feed clip, okay? And what that allowed them to do is make the gun actually thinner and a little bit lower profile, if you will. So inherently you see it's a little nicer, if you will, a little bit lighter weight. Probably the very biggest difference though is the trigger, all right? So they have what they call a three lever trigger. And it's pretty hard to explain, but basically what you get with a three lever trigger is if you pull a trigger just a little bit, it moves the sear a lot. So if you basically, it's about half the distance of a standard trigger. When you pull just a little bit, it's moving that sear a lot. So it, it just goes off quicker. It, it's just a, a very expensive, chrome-plated, very well-designed trigger. Once a gun does go off, there's an over-travel screw, so you can't pull the trigger anymore, so it even feels crisper because of that. Accuracy a lot of times comes down to the trigger. Um, I, I really, if that, that's what really sells the X-Bolt. And on top of it then, Todd, you know there's a ton of different designs of the X-Bolts, stuff that we don't offer in the A-bolt line like Cerakote guns. This happens to be a Hell's Canyon speed. Fluted barrel Cerakote, it's kind of interesting. You would think stainless steel is rust resistant. Stainless steel and like a salt test will actually start rusting around 24 hours, okay? Um, they did a Cerakote gun and basically it was like 2000 and some hours before there was any rust on Cerakote. So it was 84 times more rust resistant than actually stainless steel. So, you know, improving to like a Cerakote, um, they have different, uh, a lot of different versions of X-Bolts, which I can go, go over quite a few, but the biggest difference, a little thinner, a little more lighter weight, if you will, um, the better feather trigger, uh, they're free floated uh, and they have a bunch of different options, but the most, you know, the most difference really is the trigger. Gil, Gil what's that one in your hand there? It's a yeah. popular color. Yeah, so this is a Hell's Canyon speed. Just an unbelievable, unbelievable rifle. You know, you got the fluted barrel, you've got a, a muzzle brake here. Um, you've got uh, the fluted barrel actually helps it cool. 
Uh, it actual, actually offers a little bit more rigidity and reduces the weight a little bit. So, you know, the fluted barrel Cerakote, of course, um, you know, this, this one's really selling well at 6.5 Creedmoor and, and like the 6.5 PRC, we're selling just a pile of these guns. They do make a bigger brother list, uh, a okay. long range right now. Gil, we're gonna, hey, we're gonna get into the Hell's Canyon series at the end of this. Okay. Keep something for the end. Okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry to ramble, man. Oh, that's all, not a problem. It works. All right. All right. I think that kind of wraps up the A bolt and the X bolt. Um, I was gonna move next. Another big comparison is the BAR series. Okay. We all know we've got the Safari and the new Mark III series. So let's run the viewers through the differences there. Um, yeah, you know, you know, it's funny. Um, you know, of course, John M. Browning, the, the most notorious gun inventor ever by a, a million times, if you will, uh, invented the BAR. That's part of the reason we aren't speaking German today. But uh, this is this gun is, was invented, you know, a long time ago. Basically, it went into commission, you know, around 1911, 1913. Um, and there hasn't really been all that many changes to it. But it's a semi-automatic rifle that shoots modern caliber. So, you know, nine times out of 10, you shoot that deer just perfect. What if it walked behind a tree right as you pulled the trigger? You know, you're ready to go. You don't have to rack a shell in there. You're ready for a quick follow-up shot. Um, you know, a lot of people still shoot BARs. I personally do. I, I really love my BARs. I've got three of them, and, and I can't say enough about them. They've got a couple different models, and what Todd wanted me to do is, is kind of go over the different models. This happens to be a Mark III, and what they did with a Mark III is they went to an alloy receiver that really lightens up the weight of the gun. Super, super cool, high-relief engraving with a little gold buckmark in there. They've got this beautiful walnut with a little different checkering design, but uh, the biggest thing, and it does have the dropout clip. So if you did drop this in the snow or you dropped it in a creek and you're out in the field, you can simply punch these two pins out, drop the trigger and make sure everything's good to go in there. So um, the BAR Mark III, really, really a nice gun, lighter than the original Safari. Uh, Todd, you've got some Safaris there. The Safari is your classic high gloss instead of the satin finish. It's got the steel receiver with a custom high bluing. You know, it's got the real rich bluing with the, the scrolling on the side. Um, that's your traditional BAR look that's been around forever. Uh, just a tremendous gun. Both of them operate fantastic. Um, one isn't really better than the other. It's, it's kind of what you like. Um, they also make it, and, and you guys have a pile. I'm just going to grab this one. They, they make it with with a, it's called a DBM. So, you know, you got an actual magazine here that gives you 10 shots. It's a, it's a shorter barrel, fluted barrel, really popular for like the hog hunters. You know, I, I kind of mentioned it before, if you're a real turbo shot, buy a DBM. You got six, you got six tries on them. We just had three tries them. Tries you know, yeah, we just had uh, 12 of them. Of course, the last model in which you guys have a pile in stock is a, is a Hell's Canyon version. So it offers that awesome Cerakote that's super rust resistant, has a fluted barrel, it's camo, um, just, a, just an awesome piece in itself. So, you know, we do have quite a few models and they're all on, all on display there at Reed's. Right, yeah, we got a great selection of BARs right now. We're yeah. fortunate. Um, Next, what else? Now, let's talk the Hell's Canyon series, Gil. Yeah. Uh, I believe this, I, don't quote me on this, but this has got to be one of the hottest series Browning has ever had. In the expo, yeah, yeah, you know, it's, the series is phenomenal. Yeah, this really, you know, we we find that a lot of the expo people, and of course, we make them in a lot of different versions from from just a standard satin finished walnut. But it seems like a lot of the people in the expo are really migrating to the the best. You know, they they they're not too price sensitive, if you will, even though it's very affordable for what you're getting. You know, if you were to customize a rifle, there, there's really nothing you could do to this rifle to make it any better in my, in, in my mind. But, you know, the Hell's Canyon, that's a, it's real popular with a person that's going to go out west. You know, they're going to be hiking in the mountains. It's lightweight, of course. Um, you know, camo, it's got a couple, we got a couple different versions of camo and it actually was a shot show version. This AU blends into the mountainside just perfectly. Just love the burnt bronze Cerakote. Um, you know, the fluted barrel, and it does have a muzzle brake. Of course, that drops your recoil to basically nothing, you know. So a lot of different uh, variations of the Hell's Canyon. This is a speed rifle. Um, we went over all the features of X-Bolt, so 
Any other things I should add to that, Todd, that you can think well, let's of? Let's talk. You got, there's three different series in the x -Bolts. You've got the speed, the long range, and the Camillon long range. So run yeah. through the three different versions, please. Yeah, so, so the speed has a 22-inch barrel. You know, they're, they're going after lightweight. It's a little lighter contour barrel. As you go into more of a, a long range, um, you are picking up a heavier barrel. Of course, there's no barrel whip with that real kind of stout barrel. The heavier the gun, the more accurate you are. And then you've got a longer barrel. Um, it, it really, all your powder is burnt up. It doesn't really increase your velocities that much, but the, the long range shooter is into that longer barrel. They're into a little heavier contour barrel. Um, so the, it's uh, uh, this happens to have the McMillan stock. I, I don't want to jump out, out on you, but I just grabbed grab the, the long range McMillan, if you will. So I don't have the long range speed right here. Um, but I might as well, as long as I have it in my hand, Todd, should I talk just a little bit about the McMillan? Go ahead. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, so the McMillan stock is a target stock. You, you know, the stock itself is extremely, extremely expensive to build. But when you're, when you're doing long range shooting, they don't want you to actually wrap your hand around the gun because you can torque it. You might not even know you're doing it, but but it could be. So Mac, McMillan wants you to actually, it's got that enhanced trigger grip, if you will, but you actually lay your thumb up on top right there. So that's kind of why it's got that goofy looking, um, not really what you're accustomed to. It's more of a target gun. It's got, uh, you know, more of a flat deal up here for, for your bags. You can get a rail system. A lot of people are, you, you can put a bipod on it along with your sling or else you can put a Picatinny rail up here. Some people like the bipods that you can unattach and attach really easily. So there is an accessory for it for a, a rail up there, but um, the McMillan spot, you know, basically the biggest difference in an X-Bolt McMillan long range is the stock itself. You're paying extra for the stock. Um, and of course it does have the longer barrel and it does have, it is heavier than McMillan. Hey, Gil, while you're talking about the X-Bolt, uh, we did have a chat question come in about it. Sure. And the question is in, in breaking the barrel in for an X-Bolt. The question is specifically on a 6.5 Creedmoor, but just in, in what are your recommendations when you're looking long range or standard and X-Bolt? You know, this is going to really, really surprise you, you know, but um, I spent a, a lot of times actually, quite, quite a bit of time shooting long range, okay? And a thousand yard stuff. And, and I've got friends that are, pretty much the best in the world, you know, guys that work for Vortex Optics. And they actually believe that you don't want to clean your barrel. And it, it sounds kind of preposterous, but I've kind of bought into it. You know, you're, you're actually, as you shoot, you know, that copper is kind of filling in the imperfections if there is any in your barrel. And it's actually getting smoother. And as you ram that copper, you know, deal and you, and you keep cleaning that barrel, you, you're actually pulling out some of the stuff that coated the imperfections and they feel the more shots they take, the more accurate their guns, you know, shoot. So, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not, that's not what Browning's viewpoint would be necessarily, but that jury is still out. That's a long conversation, but I do, do know the best shooters I know that shoot every day, that shoot matches, all across the U.S., a lot of them don't clean their barrel. There you go. Interesting. Kind of goes against the grain, but yeah. Right on. Did you have a BAR the, um, Hell's Canyon speed to show off or not? I don't, Todd. I maybe you, you can can feature right, that one. But these are new. Super, yeah, check, super nice looking gun. Check out that camo design. It's actually an Atex camo. It's it's right. it's it's, it's a bronze Cerakote on it. Yeah, it's it's awesome. The fluted barrel. Um, that gun is. Awesome. That was a SHOT Show special gun. Once a year at the SHOT Show, the industry show, we offer guns that aren't in the catalog. And uh, some of those guns are kind of hard to find, but um, Todd usually steps up and makes gives me a big smile when he hands me the order at the SHOT Show. And and he's a BAR fan, so hence, you guys have we a lot of right BAR now. guns in stock. Yep. All right, next, let's run through. We got about Five more minutes on rifles. Let's run through the max real quick. Yeah, this is this is awesome. Um, thanks for awesome having rifle for the money. All right, check this out, right? So the Mac McMillan gun, Todd, if you need prices, call Todd. He'll he'll get them to you right away. Or Aaron or, or anyone at Reed's that for that matter, Adam's always built. But uh the McMillan stock, okay, 
very, this is a kind of a target stock. It's not quite as heavy as a Macmillan. So you, you could hunt with this, no problem. But what we're finding, and I do a lot of shoots, um, what we're finding is eyeball centering right in the very center of the scope is actually kind of important. Case in point, you know, I'll sight in my rifles, they'll be pinpoint right on, and a customer will come and he'll shoot a group, but it might be off to the left or it might be higher down, you know, and that's because his eye wasn't centered exactly where my eye was centered. And so what we do with, a, with our stock that we came out, which isn't a very expensive target rifle, being an X-Bolt, um, we can adjust that so it centers your eye perfectly in the middle of the scope. Because the manufacturer doesn't know if you're going to have a, a super, you know, a target scope on here or a one inch tube that's low mounted, you might have a fat face or a long skinny face or who knows, you know. So now you can adjust your stock to really center your eye right in the center there. And then it does have, you know, kind of that cupped up stock design where you, you rest your thumb right on the top of there. Um, it is built it's built so you can put a Picatinny rail on here or you can just put a, a bipod along with a sling. You know, they really thought of everything with this stock. It's got the fluted barrel and, the, you know, it's ported for, for muzzle reduction. It's got an elongated uh, bolt handle there, just a little quicker to run. You know, it's kind of common amongst the target shooters. This is, this is probably the most affordable, most accurate target gun you can buy right out of the box. Uh, yeah, and it, it does, of course, have that feather trigger, fully adjustable, um, you know, with no creep. And we've got all the calibers in stock, too. You know, for something right around a 1000 bucks, it's really, really hard to beat. That's, that's an amazing value for what that gun is, if you compare it to the price of a Macmillan. Right. And, and real quick, Gil, because I know it does jump a bit to get to pistols. Um, yep. I just want to bring something up because we ran into this and Murphy's Lawn Effect, of course, the big, beautiful Gunfair Flyer went out to all our good Browning customers. And on the back of it, it did feature these Browning rifles. And on the back there, it does mention 10% off ammo, 20% off scopes, and 30% off case and accessories. And I just want to be clear, the only way we can do this, just given that the gun fair didn't occur and apologize that it went out, but at the same time, it's good for everybody to see the the, uh, the deals is give us a call. So I know that Gil, you're running specials on Vortex Optics when they buy the Browning gun. That's part of what we were kind of hinting at with 20% off that we just yep. do that on the phone to keep everybody happy. Ammo bought at the same time, you get an extra 10% off and then the 30% off be any gun cases, cleaning accessories, uh, bipod, bipods, et cetera, that you'd be putting together with that as a package. So when it's game time and you can, and you can decide what, what you've learned through here and you want to add on some of the accessories or, or the optics, we can put that together and hand pick it, rings, bases, everything, get you the package deal. Just got to call us and put it together as we're doing that. So it's easy to check everything out on the website at readsports.com, but also you can give us a call. We'll figure it out. Even if it makes it past that Rice Creek window, we'll make sure we take care of it a good deal. So awesome. I want to make sure that all tied together. You bet. All right, real quick, let's run through uh, Browning series of handguns. So we've got the 1911, the 380, and the 22. We've got a great yeah, you know Yep, that's exactly right. Uh, you know, and I'll, I'll run through all three of them, but just maybe just a little bit of history. You know, um, you know, John M. Browning was was quite a designer, and way back in the day, you know, he, he designed all kinds of different rifles. But around the time, you know, right around 1911, actually just before that, he designed three things for for the military. One was a machine gun, a BAR in the trench gun similar to our BARs we have today we just talked about. Another one was like a 50 caliber BMG, pretty amazing. And then of course, he designed the 1911 pistol, okay? Which is, which is really kind of amazing, you know, for, for him to, way back then. Now think of a car in 1911, and now think of a car today, how much different they are. And then you look at a 1911, that's almost exactly the same as it was back then. So, I mean, to, Browning knows a lot, uh, millions and millions of pistols have been built off of John M. Browning's design. So we've got the 1911s. What we did to celebrate um, John M. Browning's, the 100th year anniversary of the 1911 is in 2011, we came out with um, a 1911-22. And it's funny, it's built right in the USA, very close to where he actually designed the gun himself. 
I can't imagine the lead that's that's in those hills out there. How many rounds those guys went through? But it's a it's a a 1911-22, super super fun to feed to shoot. It's about 85 percent size wise of the actual 1911-45 that he bought back in the day. And an, and an interesting fact too, and they come they come in all bunch of different models. They've got some pretty awesome you know medallions with a gold, you know, the classic wood with a gold buck mark. They come in a more tactical version with a Picatinny rail under there. Um, you know, there, there's, there's, as far as when we get into buck marks, it really gets confusing. Uh, just skipping, you know, right to a few of the features of it. You know, like we, we brought out a 380, you know, right after we came out with a 22, just actually it was only like five years ago. And 380s are, you know, self-defense guns, known as pocket guns. And I'll be darned if they don't fit right in the pocket. You know, you can't even really feel them there. So, you know, these 380s are actually pocket guns. This is this is this has got a lot of features here. So, um, of course, I checked to see if they're on all unloaded 15 times before I'm doing this. So, um, one thing is it's got a little bit longer barrel than most 380s, and that's really nice for a couple things. When you pull a slide back, um, it's a lot easier when you pull a slide back. There isn't as much pressure than a real short one. Um, it also gives you a little bit more muzzle velocity, and of course, a slightly larger, bar longer barrel is going to give you more accuracy. So you've got the reliability, and, and to talk about reliability, in order to get a government contract back then, you had to shoot 6,000 rounds through a gun without it failing. The first one ever to complete it 100% was a Browning 1911 with John and Browning watching. It took two days to do it. When the gun got too hot, they just throw it in a bucket of water to cool it down. So reliableness, uh, as far as this 380 goes, you've got slightly longer barrel than most 380s, more accurate, little better velocities, a um, little easier to cock. It's got dual safeties here that are ambidextrous. So if you wanna run the, the safety with your left hand, you certainly can. If you wanna run it with your right hand, you certainly can. So it's an ambidextrous safety, a little bump back here, which it's a double safety. So right now it's on fire and the gun won't fire because I'm not depressing this. Your hand has to be there. That way, if you're riding with it, it it's, a, it's a real safety feature if it's in your pocket. Or back in the day, they actually designed that because a lot of the people rode them on the horse and you didn't want to shoot your horse by mistake, you know. But um, the 1911's unbelievable design, really, really fun to shoot, super accurate, bunch of different designs when it comes to buck marks. Now, there's a 22. You can shoot 22 so inexpensively and they're so much fun to shoot. Um, and we've sold so many buck marks, it's hard to even talk about. But when it comes to buck marks, there's a lot, a lot of choices. The best thing really is to go in and see which ones are most comfortable in your hands. Um, ours actually are, have an ambidextrous grip and they've really got a comfortable, you know, finger grooved grip here, okay? And what that allows, if, if it really allows, it's what's most comfortable in your hand is what's gonna be most accurate in your hand. And then we make versions that have just the fiber optic sights on the front, we make versions with a Picatinny rail. Mounting like a, a Vortex Venom on the top makes you a little bit more accurate than just the iron sight. So a lot of people are mounting red dots on the top of them. Um, when you talk about the Browning, you're, you're talking about reliability. You're talking about function, precise, a uh, company that stands behind their product. And it's just, a, it's just a matter if you like a pretty one, if you want a standard bull barrel, if you'd rather put a an optic on it, you might want to pick a teeny rail. It's just, uh, you know, I know Todd, you've got a, a really good deal on the rosewood. Take a look at that handle, it's beautiful. Um, rosewood handle model, of it. you know, it's it's just uh, it's just a matter of of how fancy you want to get. Right, yeah, right now I think we've got 11 different buck marks in stock and they're starting, yeah, that's, that's, starting at 239 bucks. That's a steal, which is a, that's amazing. A great buy on those. So. One thing I wanted to point out on the 1911 380, keep in mind this fits, especially ladies, great. This grip is small and tiny. You know, smaller hands fit this thing so nice, it's unbelievable. So keep that in mind also. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out, Todd. All right, I come here, it wraps it up. I think we have one more question. Yep, on the buck mark. On the buck mark. Dry firing yeah. the bu buck mark. Yeah. Safe to do. Got or? a question. Uh, can the dry, can the buck mark be dry fired? It, you know, we don't, it's, I've never seen it hurt one myself. I think uh, the right, correct answer from the manufacturers, we don't recommend it. When you drive for your gun, you should have a dummy shell in there. Um, 
but it, it does bring up a it does bring up a very good point. You know, our triggers are very crisp. And what you don't want is a lot of travel in your trigger and you want it to be crisp when it goes off. So, you know, the Buckmark trigger, most of them are shipped around three and a half, four pounds, you know, and it, it's a very good trigger. Most semi-automatics, it, it's not like a bolt action trigger with a sear. It's, it's meant, it's a spring that comes over and latches. So there's usually a little bit of creep in pistol triggers or BAR triggers compared to like an X-bolt, where if you really feel our triggers in the 1911s and the Buckmarks, that's that's a big advantage that I, I feel we have. Wow. Excellent. Anything else you want to cover, Ty? I think that pretty much. Yeah, I just have one question. So, would you rather do this from your office, or would you rather be out on the range at, at the gun fair? You know, I I kind of a people person. I missed the shoe there. I I did twenty four Reeds classics. A lot of right. great here to prove it. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I've been around a little bit. But you know that that's a tremendous event. I do. I, there's a lot of people I get to see every year at your place and. And I do miss the people and I, I miss the sales. It's a lot of fun, but uh, I appreciate you letting me brag about my stuff. I know I'm obviously, um, you know, kind of eat, breathe and sleep browning. So I, you know, I am a so sales. We'll do it for a I didn't team overdo team. it. You Everybody know. understands, but you, you will, you can appreciate a lot of the people yeah. that are on this call in particular will be familiar faces at, from the gun fair and from the store and the classics and everything. So we really appreciate you making the time. I think, you know, a couple of things that we always want to make sure everybody understands is we will, re this is recorded, so we will be able to put it back out on YouTube. Uh, you know, Chris is covering a, a lot of good details, and we'll try and get make that available. It'll be on our uh, VIP page where the, where you signed up for the Zoom session. And then we we do have a bunch of Zoom sessions coming up. This is week two of three weeks of these uh, factory live sessions because this is the closest we're going to get for a while, unfortunately, to having a good old-fashioned gun fair. Uh, as it is right now, we're probably ended up in a, in a postponing all the way till next year. Uh, we've been trying to work on dates. So we keep getting asked the question just so everybody knows from planning uh, planning perspective. So the deals and the guns that we want to make sure everybody takes advantage of are really through the 30th. Um, just knowing what's going to go on with rifles and what's going on already with handguns right now. Um, we are cutting Rice, uh, Rice Creek gunfair style deals, uh, but do call to get that done. I, I, just given the time, we do have people here right now. If there is one you want to make sure it doesn't get uh, allocated to somebody else in the next 24 hours, give us a call. And we are getting, we're, we're, there's a work in progress doing the, the Zoom live session. So if you do have feedback, don't just pick up the phone, give us a ring or shoot us a chat at, as this wraps up of anything we can do better. Um, also, if you did like what happened, uh, let us know that too. Uh, give us a, a review or a thumbs up on Facebook or let us know that, uh, you know, when you do see it on YouTube, you know, like it or subscribe to it because we'll have more coming. Thanks to Gil and his team. Uh, we may even have you back yet next week again, uh, Gil. And so we, we appreciate everything. Um, let me you, break about my stuff. I'll be back. Thank you. Yeah, you, you. You're the best, man. You rock it. You rock it. So we're going to unmute for a second and just see if anybody has any questions uh, like to verbalize and then we'll see if there's anything else coming through on the chats. Um, so if you do have some background noise, everybody, uh, just be mindful of it. We'll unmute all and see if anybody has any questions. We can leave um, May 21st, Thursday afternoon, and come back Monday night. We'll go out of Cleveland. Zach's back making back. some uh, arrangements there. And anybody That's else? <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for watching. I, I, I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, right on. Hey, Gil, thank you so much. And uh, appreciate everybody. Be safe. And we'll see you in the store. Give us a call. And uh, oh. we'll Take care.